Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to be uh, doing some testing on the, uh, the LaTime uh, 12.8 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that is uh, specifically designed for uh, trolling motors. So it's like a TM edition. Um, I already did a unboxing video. Uh, if you want to watch it, I'll go ahead and post a little blurb of it right up here. And so I've started by, uh, I think I ended that video by saying I was going to charge this up all the way so that way we could start with a discharge test. Well, usually when I charge up a battery all the way and then, you know, then it settles back down, it settles down to like, I don't know, 13, 3, 13, 6. It's always like 13, which I've just come to expect. Well, I, I went ahead and uh, just pulled this battery back onto my bench tested the voltage and it is 12.8. So I'm like, oh, I, I guess I didn't charge the battery all the way. So I went ahead and hooked it up to my, uh, my charger, you know, to get it back up to 100% so I could do the discharge test. And the charger is not giving it any charge at all. Um, and the voltage of this battery is 12.8. And so I feel like it should. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. Um, and so I connected, I connected it to my, my, uh, uh, my variable voltage tester uh, charger, and it's doing the exact same thing. Like as soon as I connect it up, here, let me show you. I know it's probably flickering, but as soon as I connect it up, it shows that it's 12.8, which is, let me go ahead and show you this. Which is, which is the voltage of the battery. It says 12.82 on my multimeter right there. Um, so it, the, it is 12.8, but as soon as I try to give it some amperage, it shoots up to 14.39. And so like if I take it, the voltage of the, if I, if I take the voltage now, yeah, that's true, 14.42. But as soon as I turn it off, it goes right back down to 12.8. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a capacity test. I really believe that is a feature of the battery, that it holds it at a lower voltage. Maybe so you can connect it to a 12 volt source, like a, uh, a trolling motor. Because maybe trolling motors can only accept a, a voltage up to you know, 13 or something like that. You know, If you have a full battery and you connect it to a trolling motor, a 12 volt tro trolling motor, uh, you know, maybe maybe that, that trolling motor will, will burn out because you're giving it too much voltage. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But I find that very interesting that this is fully charged. It's not accepting any more power. Uh, but it's settling at 12.8, which is exactly what the nominal voltage is for the battery. So I just wanted to throw that out there that I find that very interesting. But I'm going to go ahead and do a discharge test. Uh, it's going to take all day just because I'm going to go ahead and do it on my computer so we can see the results and the, uh, the, the discharge curve. So I'll get all that done and we'll see what the results are. Okay, everyone. Well, the capacity test for the uh, LaTime battery is done. And of course, what I did was I, uh, I just saved the data and uh, so I could just pull it up later because it was late and uh, you know, I just want to go to bed. And when I pulled it back up, of course, it wasn't what I wanted. It's all there. You just need to do a little subtraction. Let me show you the screen and we can get our final number for the total amp hours of this battery. Okay, and what I have is I actually have two separate charts. Uh, one of them shows the complete capacity of 121.762 amp hours, but that is the complete discharge and then the recharging back up. Um, so what I need is I need to subtract uh, this 121 by this 15.91, which is just the recharge. So if you subtract those two numbers, you get 105.852 amp hours. So almost 106 amp hours out of a 100 amp hour battery is really respectable. So that is a very big plus. Now, what I want to show you is uh, we're going to go ahead and do a uh, uh, kind of like a 100 amp hour uh, power test, I guess you could say. 
we're gonna run this thing for like 10 minutes uh, with 100 amps just to make sure it can do it. But one of the big things th that's why this is uh, like a trolling motor addition is that it has a huge surge capacity. It says that it can handle 300 to 500 amps of surge. And I think it's for five seconds. So what we're gonna do is, I know what, I don't even know if I have anything that can pull that amount of surge, but I'm gonna try to find something. So we're just gonna run, start up some pretty big, pretty big items and we'll see what the surge is and we'll see if we can get this thing to pop out, I guess. So let's just try some stuff. For my setup, you know, here's my, my Litton battery. Uh, I have a ton of red wires. This is not recommended if you have a permanent, you know, this is gonna be a permanent solution uh, because you need to be able to distinguish your negatives and your positives. This is just ridiculous, but it's just what I had on hand. So, and we're going to be uh, powering this 5,000 watt uh, MX Moon Free. So this should be able to handle anything we throw at it since all we're really doing is testing the battery. So let's go ahead and uh, find, uh, you know, uh, let's, let's try a table saw. <sighs> okay, to be brutally honest with you, I haven't touched this thing in years. So it might not even start up, but we're gonna go ahead and try it anyway. Let's go ahead and get our clamp meter and I'm gonna set, uh, I'm gonna try to see if, I've never used the min max on here before, so I'm hoping I can capture the maximum amperage. So let's go for it. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna fire it up and hopefully we can capture that uh, high amperage. Right, I'm not gonna lie to you, that scared the bejesus out of me. Okay, I finally got an amperage out of this thing. And we're looking at 215 amps of initial, of initial surge. So that battery handled 215 amps uh, with no problem. And full disclosure, I did that test like 10 times to try to figure out how to get the amperage to read on that uh, clamp meter. Now that I finally got it, I wanna try something different. I'm gonna try my shopsmith right here. This thing, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know if it'll start up, but we'll see, because it pulls huge amps. All right, I just ran my shopsmith in it, and again, I had to run it like four times, started up four times, and it ran it every single time. And here is my amp draw. 385 amps. Um, I mean, that's for a 100 amp battery. That is, that is pretty impressive. I have to admit that is impressive. I mean, 300, 385 amps at 13.3 volts. Now, 385 amps at 13.3 volts, if you multiply those together, you get 5,120 watts. That's how much you're pulling through that 100 amp battery, which is only supposed to handle 1,280 continuous. So, I mean, that's big. That's, this thing is really showing its muscle. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. So. Uh, I'm going to say that that range between uh, 300 and 500 amps for five seconds, um, I believe it can do it just fine. So what I want to prove now is that it can run a 100 amp load, um, you know, for like 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and now for this 100 amp soak test, uh, we have a timer here. We're going to go ahead and just set it and let it run for 10 minutes. And we have a heat gun and a heater over here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see all that, can you? There we go. Hi, how's that? Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on low and put that on low. That should give us like right around probably 110 to 115 amps. So we're gonna go ahead and let that run and we'll see how long it can run for. And I'll stop it after 10 minutes to pick and pull it off. So let's go ahead and start it. Let's go ahead and put this on low. Put this on low. That's already pulling 73 amps, but it's gonna lower back down once the heat starts regulating. So yeah, it's lowering back down. So let's go ahead and turn on the heat gun. 
turn this on and it looks like it's staying steady at right around 115 amps so we'll see if it can run for 10 minutes okay we have reached the five minute mark uh let's go ahead and pull up a thermal camera and uh and see what kind of temperatures we're looking at for the battery and there it is and you can see um uh, i mean it's not even 100 degrees those cables the, the cables look look warm i mean but my hand you know my hand is 95 degrees 94 degrees these cables you know this connector right here this this top connector that's 91 degrees fahrenheit so i mean this is not hot at all the battery uh, there's a hot spot right there but again 87 degrees no no big deal whatsoever okay it has been over 10 minutes now and this is still running and the amazing part about it is that the amperage has only fluctuated between 115.2 amps and now it's sitting at 115.7 so a half an amp of fluctuation that means that this this stayed at its voltage between 12.3 and 12.2 that entire time it was running this load that is really impressive and now let's look at the thermal camera to see what the heat is here's the thermal camera and you can see that these these terminals, I mean, we're looking at 100, 100 degrees, 101 degrees Fahrenheit. And that one is, yeah, that one's like 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I mean, there is nothing hot about this battery at all. And if you look at it from the side, like that hot spot right there, um, yeah, that, that hot spot right there is what, 90, 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So this battery, is just fine and here's what the heaters look like i mean 380 degrees um, yeah so you know that my thermal camera is working so i find that amazing this this battery is doing great so far okay now that we got the battery nice and warm from this 115 amp 10 minute soap test uh let's go ahead and cool it off and when I say cool it off, I mean throw it in my deep freezer. Uh, because I understand that this battery has low temperature charging protection. Now I looked at the manual, I read this thing through and through, and it doesn't say anything in this manual about low temperature charging protection. So I went on their website. And yeah, if you click on this battery, the second line says low temperature charging cutoff protection so i understand that to be that if i throw this in my deep freezer and leave it in there for 24 hours if i pull it out i'm not going to be able to charge it so let's go ahead and do that right now it is 7 p.m central standard time and so we'll come back to you at 7 p.m tomorrow and we'll try to charge this battery okay uh it's been 24 hours since I put this uh, Litime 12 volt 100 amp hour battery in my deep freezer. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull it right out of there and we're gonna try to wake it up with this Hasido charger, which I know for a fact wakes up batteries when they're sleeping from being completely discharged. So let's go ahead and get it out of the freezer and just plug it right in, see what happens. All right, here we go. Oh, the terminals are already frosting over. I don't like doing this with frosted terminals, but we're gonna do it. There's one. Please don't turn on. Oh. Uh, and oh what's happening here oh it says full it stopped charging i know for a fact this battery is definitely not full so that is great that that worked that worked great 
That is exactly what we want to see. We wanted to see, I wanted to see that this thing is not, oh my God, not gonna charge. Cold temperature charging protection worked perfectly. Uh, it did try to start up, but then the BMS shut that down within a few seconds. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. You know what, and I think, I think that's it for this battery. Uh, lit time really, I think, knocked it out of the park with this one. That initial surge of 300 to 500 amps, uh, I got 325 amps of initial surge, and it ran that, uh, that big drill with no problem. Uh, you know, it gave us 106 amp hours out of a 100 amp hour battery. If this battery had, um, you know, Bluetooth capabilities so we could use an app to see what was going on with it, it would be phenomenal. I think that's really the only thing that's missing. Uh, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions about the Latime 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, please leave them in the uh, comments below. Um, if you want to find more, there's going to be a link in the description. Uh, if you want to actually see the manual for yourself, I'll have a link to it. Uh, I'll have a, a PDF link to it on my website if you go to the battery section and find the Latime uh, battery. So uh, thanks again, and you all have a great night. Bye-bye.